What's up guys? We are back for another Boss Fight Studio review today. We've got the second wave of Bucky O'Hare figures in, and if you saw my recent haul video, you kind of knew this was coming because I showed them off there. But we have got uh, three figures, starting with Bucky O'Hare himself. So these all come on those collector-friendly cards. We've got the Neil Adams artwork that are all kind of tailored to each figure. And then we have got Astral Projection Jenny, as far as the other repaint figure in the line. New card art, same deal going on there. And then the new figure is Deadeye Duck, my favorite figure from the Vintage line, favorite figure, favorite character from the cartoon. And then the back has some cross-sell. And these all have new bios written by Larry Hama. So we've got a lot of uh, kind of callbacks to the original stuff going on with the art by Neil Adams, the bios written by Larry Hama. It's just all around great presentation, so I really dig these packaging. Of course, we're going to pull them out, so let's just go ahead and do that and take a look. All right, guys, so here they are out of the box, and we're going to talk about uh, Jenny, and we'll talk about Bucky first, because there's really not a lot to talk about. It's mostly just a redeco, and, you know, if you've seen my original video, which I will link down below if you haven't, uh, it's the same figure, but there is a slight improvement in one area that I'm going to talk about, and then we'll do comparisons between the original and the uh, the current variants that we've got here. And then we'll spend the last, the bulk of the time talking about Deadeye Duck. Uh, he's my favorite, so I'm probably going to end up rambling on anyway, but he's got a lot to cover. He's got a He's got four arms, so he's got tons of accessories. Uh, you can't really go wrong there. So let's get started, and we'll do uh, Bucky first, and then we'll go to Jenny, and then we will go to Deadeye Duck. All right, so here is Stealth Mission Bucky on his own, and uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail on these repaint figures, just because I've already got a video for the overall toys themselves, but that same quality from Wave 1 does carry over into Wave 2. These guys are super articulated 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, so I'm not going to spend much time on it, just mention that. Uh, articulated tail, ears, swivels everywhere, articulated feet. So they are loaded to the gills. Uh, well, you know, 4 inch figures, really. Uh, they are very much more articulated than her average figure in this scale, so keep that in mind. We'll talk more about the articulation with Deadeye Duck. You'll get a good idea of how these guys operate. So this is the Stealth Mission variant. He is decked out in this teal camouflage uniform with the camouflage stripes all over his skin, all over his outfit, and I do think he looks pretty cool. Uh, we've even got a redeco cape, which uh, kind of goes with the same color scheme. His guns are different color, and we'll talk about the differences here between the regular figure uh, momentarily, but as far as this general look goes, I think he looks pretty awesome. I, I'd be hard-pressed to say that I don't like this more than the regular Bucky. That Bucky is just so iconic to me. Uh, it's, you know, it hits the nostalgia factor for me, but I really, actually really like this redeco of Bucky O'Hare. Something about this particular color of the outfit and the green skin really does it for me. Works really, really well. And the camouflage stripes actually aren't too distracting. I think they look really nice, uh, and I think they flow with the character pretty well. So, um, Let's talk about accessories, and then we will talk about the comparisons. All right, now accessories are just like with the first figure. Tons of hands, guns, we've got extra faces, the whole the whole deal. That's kind of one of the hallmarks of Boss Fight Studio in this line. So we do have the same guns that we saw with the first figure. They're just those standard blaster pistols that are modeled after the original toy. Uh, they're just cast in a different color plastic, kind of a navy blue, black kind of color. I think it's more navy blue than anything else. We do have the uh, extra heads, which are very similar, yet they are different. So it's really kind of hard at times to pick up what is is or isn't different about them, but they are different. There's very, very slight differences. Uh, the big difference with, with these two is that the mouth is open versus being closed on this one. Though you, you get to see his, his rabbit teeth in all of them. And then he comes standard out of the box with two... Uh, pistol holding hands. We've got the style pose hand, we've got a pointing hand, and then we have two closed fist hands. I generally stick with the, you know, just the ones that hold the guns, although if you're so inclined you want to use something else, you can store his guns on his belt. All these little, uh, I don't know, protrusions on the belt, they can be used to holster the gun, which I've always liked. Uh, that kind of harks back to the uh, the original toy. Deadeye Duck does it as well. So, you know, you've kind of got a smattering of accessories here, uh, tons of different ways to use them. So let's take a look at what is really different about this figure in terms of deco. So we've got Stealth Mission on the left, we've got regular Bucky O'Hare on the right. It's pretty obvious that's what's different. I mean, the, the outfit is entirely redesigned in terms of its look. We do have the same cape, but different uh, deco. Just the same figure, like I said. We've got different paint apps. We've got, uh, I've got one of the other faces on this Bucky as well. That's one of the extra heads or extra faces, but we've got a different suit. We've got different color goggles, different color guns, different color boots and gloves. Uh, one thing that I did mention I said was kind of an improvement in this figure is that my one real gripe uh, with this figure, and I, there are actually kind of two, and I'll talk about one as well, but one is is really the big thing for me is that I, have a re I had a really hard time putting this figure's cape 
tape on. Uh, so much so that I don't think I'm ever going to try to take it out because it really just doesn't want to go in there. Uh, the peg that's on that cape really, really, really was kind of malformed. And I know I'm not the only one that had that problem. I've seen other posts about folks having that same issue with their Bucky figures. Uh, but this figure, similar to the chocolate Bucky O'Hare figure that I did a quick look on a while back around Easter time, uh, the peg is perfect. No issues. Pops right in. The other real sort of gripe that I have is that it is still very, very difficult to swap the hands on this guy. Uh, when I was trying to swap hands on the original figure, a lot of times what would happen is the entire arm would come off instead of the glove, because that's where the separation is. The separation is at the glove. It's not the not the actual hand itself. It's the entire forearm, basically. But what will happen is if you pull too hard, you're going to separate the entire arm at the elbow rather than just pulling that glove off, and it's kind of a pain. So usually I have to heat them up, and one of my gripes is that I don't like having to heat up a figure just because maybe the tolerances are so, so tight that it's just not going to pop out. You can still do it, uh, but it's still it's still a prevalent issue with this figure. But thankfully, uh, the the cape issue is no longer a problem for me, at least. Uh, I would love to know if anybody else is having or, or did or didn't have issues with their cape. But as you can see, these two figures are strikingly similar in sculpt and design, but in terms of their overall deco, they are worlds apart, and I do really, really, really like this new camouflage look. Next up, we've got Astral Projection Jenny. This is one that I was really, really interested in, just because, like I've said a hundred times before at this point, I really like translucent plastic on figures. I really like the clear stuff. It just kind of does it for me. Effects pieces are always a favorite for me. But this figure seems to be, uh, in the overwhelming degree, that most of it is cast in some sort of translucent plastic. So at least the legs are, the torso is, the arms are, hands are, the hair maybe as well. Uh, but I'm having a hard time picking up on it because it is painted with kind of a pearlescent look. Uh, obviously there is definitely a lot of paint going on with that hair, but the tail looks to be translucent as well. So it's very possible that the entire figure is to some degree. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to pinpoint exactly what it is, but I'm really digging this look. Again, she is the same kind of figure that we had previously. Slight deco change on this one. Most of her overall aesthetic is still pretty much the same. She's got black suit, silver suit, and then we've got different colors. So we've got different color jewels on her, and we've got different color effect pieces. But for the most part, she's not as stark of a difference to uh, Bucky as the original one. So, um, you know, Jenny is pretty similar, whereas Bucky is quite different in terms of his deco, but she's different enough that when they're side by side, you'll really notice a difference uh, to the point where it's not like you're buying exactly the same figure, despite the fact that they're still kind of close together. And just like Bucky, Jenny also comes with a ton of accessories. She actually comes with more. So I've already got a few on her right now. We've got one of her kind of psychic knife hands. We've got one of the effect pieces, and then we have a style pose hand here on the left. She comes out of the box with uh, two kind of standard gripping hands, although she doesn't really have anything to grip. So we've got those. We have another psychic knife. We have another effect piece, and these just kind of clip on at the wrist, take the hand off, put them on. We have another style pose hand. We have two fist hands, and then we also have have extra faces. So we've got a winking face, we've got her with her mouth open, and then we have, she's kind of got a furrowed brow, kind of angry there. So this is her standard face. So she has four faces, and we have got, what, seven hands, and then four effect pieces. So she comes with a ton of accessories, uh, more so than Bucky, and that's kind of one of the reasons why she would kind of edged him out originally for me, because not only did we finally get a Jenny figure, but she just came packed to the gills. And now we have two Jenny figures, which is just crazy to me, since we never had her to begin with. So let's take a look real quick at what this Jenny looks like against the original one. All right, so we've got the regular Jenny on the left, we've got the new one, the Astral Projection Jenny on the right. So you can see what I mean in the fact that they are still very, very similar in their overall design. The big difference is, of course, is the pearlescent paint, and then, of course, the translucent plastic. But the design is still very similar. Silver and black outfits, she's got purple jewels versus blue kind of navy jewels here, and then, of course, the different effect pieces. So we got pink and we've got purple. So they're very, very similar. Uh, I didn't have any quality control type issues with Jenny to begin with. I still don't. I think she is a fan fantastic figure. And again, it's another one of those situations where uh, take your pick. Either one would be great figures, and they both look like they jumped right out of the comic book or right out of the TV show. And uh, Boss Fight Studio absolutely continues to kill it with this figure. All right, here he is, the man himself, Deadeye Duck. A longtime favorite character for me. Just a weird character, weird design, space duck, eye patch, 
four arms, four guns. How can you really go wrong? So this is very much in line with the other figures in this line. We have got tons of accessories. We've got great articulation, great sculpt, great overall likeness to the source material. So I'm, I'm a huge fan at the at the outset, just because of who it is and because it's a modern figure of one of, one of a long time weird favorite characters for me. But they actually did a fantastic job on top of that. So the head is on a double ball peg, so you got tons of movement all over, all around, up and down, side to side, all that good stuff. The arms are hinged at the shoulder. There is a single joint elbow, and then we've got rotation at those wrists. They're all the same. He does have upper torso rotation, so you can kind of swivel him a little bit. He does have a little bit of a bobbing action as well, but his harness is going to hinder that quite a bit. He kind of locks him in place, but you can get a little movement around as well. He does also have movement at uh, the waist down here, but it's, a, it's the same kind of situation where you're going to move him and he's going to hit those harnesses and it's just going to stop him. So he does, you can move him in maybe a little bit different way down at the bottom and then at a little different at the top to kind of give him a little more life. He does have ball jointed legs, so they go out, they go forward, side to side, and you can swivel them as well. We have got single joints at the knees. Mine are still really, really tight though. Still working those joints out. And then he has uh, ball joints at the ankles. So tons of movement, a lot of rotation up and down. And then of course, since it's a ball, that's side to side for rocker action. So he does have a ton of articulation, especially for such a small figure. You really can't go too much more wrong with uh, packing in articulation without making them kind of less sturdy and just kind of wonky in general. So I think they have a good mix of articulation to allow you to pose them in some really dynamic poses without going overboard to make them kind of unstable. So beyond that, of course, a big thing is sculpt and paint and all that good stuff. So he definitely, like I've said, uh, I think he looks like he jumped right out of the comic, like he jumps right out of the cartoon. We've got that eye patch, we've got the headset on, sculpted onto the hat, We've got the forearms, we've got the harness, we've got his, uh, you know, webbed feet that are shoved into those kind of boots down there. And then the one thing I always thought was weird is that his tail is inside of his flight suit and it wraps around with his harness. So I thought that was always funny just for the figure itself. But I think he's sculpted exceptionally well, uh, especially at this size. They still pack in a lot of detail. You've got the wrinkles and just the line work on the flight suit to give it a little bit of life, let the light hit it, kind of cast some shadows on the figure, make him look really good. And of course that bill is sculpted really, really well. His duck bill, you see him gritting his teeth. And of course, you know he's got extra extra bills as well. So we'll talk about those. And then as far as paint goes, he doesn't have tons. Most of him is cast in the in the colors that he needs to be cast in. But we do have, you know, yellow on the armbands. We've got the silver paint on the headsets. We've got some blacks and yellows. Just like with Bucky and Jenny, the eyes are painted. Well, the eye is painted really nicely. It looks like comic book art, which I really dig on these figures. And then he has the painted eye patch as well as the teeth and the gum lines that are painted in there. I don't have any issues with quality control on this figure. I find that he is uh, articulated just fine. I don't, have any, I don't have any over stiff or loose joints. They're stiff, but they're new. So they'll work themselves out over time. The rest of the figure I think is great. I don't have any, any true issues, no paint splotches, none of that stuff. So let's take a look at uh, all the stuff that he comes with because this guy has quite a few accessories as you might imagine. Now as far as accessories goes, obviously he has the four arms, he has four guns, he is the chief gunner as well. So that kind of gives you a hint of what he's going to come packed with. So we have got actually three different guns here. So this gun, this gun, and these two guns are different. These two are the same and these two are different. They're sculpted very well. They're very similar to Bucky's gun. This is the same thing that Bucky has as well. But these two are unique to Deadeye Duck in this particular line. And they are the same in terms of the fact that you can pop them out of his hands and you can put them on the pegs on his suit or either around his belt or the ones that I find that be the best are these two at the top of the shoulders on his back. So you can put two guns there, give him two guns, maybe swap out some hands, do something crazy with him, something like that. He does come with four hands out of the box. We've got this hand, this hand, and this hand are the same trigger, trigger finger hands. This hand is slightly different in that his pinky is kind of extended, but it's still a trigger finger hand. So these are your four gun holding hands in terms of what comes in the box ready to go. The extra hands are the uh, hand that's holding like the piece of chalk or it's like a pencil or something for him to draw battle plans, I assume. We have got a right-handed fist, we have got a left-handed thumbs up, and we have got a left-handed style pose hand. So you could get really wild. There's tons of permutations for what you could do as far as combinations of uh, the hands and guns and all that stuff. And then he, of course, just like with Bucky and Jenny, he comes with extra bills. Instead of extra faces, this bill pops off. And where 
Bucky's, Bucky and Jenny's faces are somewhat difficult to pull off. This pops off very easily, but not in a sense that it's loose. So it's very easy to swap. He has a closed mouth, because you can see the, the default one comes with him gritting his teeth. And similar to Bucky, he has a, an extra head that's actually, or extra bill, that's very, very similar, uh, but slightly different. So you can see these two, they are similar, but he is gritting his teeth a little bit harder with this one. So it's a very subdued change. But it is uh, it is a different look for him, so uh, it's it's a slight change, but it's you know, it's nice to have options. Uh, I don't know how much more they could have done, except for maybe giving him an open mouth. But I don't know the if the logistics of that made it a little bit more difficult, or or if it was costed out. But in terms of what you get right out of the box, you get eight hands, you get four guns, and you get three different interchangeable duck bills. I don't really think you could ask for too much more here. So at the end of the day, I am, again, very, very happy with these figures. Deadeye Duck is a supremely awesome toy. There is no doubt about it. All the stuff he comes with, the look, the feel, just everything screams vintage Bucky O'Hare to me, and I love what they've done here. The new repaints for Jenny and Bucky are also exceptionally good toys. I do love the fact that the cape works better on this Bucky this time around. He still does have the issues with swapping out arms for me personally, but at the end of the day, I can get past that because the figures are just that good. For any real Bucky O'Hare fan out there, these are a must-have as far as I'm concerned, and anybody that just wants to jump in, now is the perfect time because Boss Fight Studio is really taking things to another level, and I cannot wait to see what they have in store for this line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Bucky O'Hare Wave 2 figures. That's Stealth Mission Bucky, Astro Projection Jenny, and Deadeye Duck. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, and until next time.